Welcome to Win the Day from Back to the Bible. I'm your coach, Pastor Nat, and today we're going to talk about worshiping without reservation. Sunday mornings at church are interesting. Some people come early. Other people like to sneak in late. Some people like to skip the service and just serve all morning. In the worship service, you know some people like to sing. Others like to stand very stoically. Some people raise their hands. Some people will even dance. Some people today, they actually bring their Bibles. There are those who like to sit and listen intently. When I preach, <laughs> a lot of people nap. But we all have a different way of worshiping. We all have a different way of approaching a worship service. And I think this is because there are many ways to worship God. I want us to turn to Psalm 100 to learn more about some of the ways that we can worship our King. This is what Psalm 100 says, beginning in verse 1. Let the whole earth shout triumphantly to the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and bless His name. The psalmist declares, the whole earth is to shout triumphantly. Memorial Stadium here in Lincoln has got to be one of the loudest stadiums in college football. When the stadium shouts, when it erupts, it can be heard all around the city. The Sovereign Lord, He is our protector. He's our provider and our King. God is all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present, fully good. He's just. God is merciful. God is gracious, and I could just go on and on. That's why, as our Heavenly Father, we can be confident in Him. So we can, no, we should shout for joy. Because God is on our side. The whole city should hear us shout. Next, the psalmist says that we are to serve the Lord with gladness. Would you say that this is part of your shape, how God has wired you, how He has designed you? Are you in the process of taking care of others? Do you love to do that? When you serve someone with right motives, that is an act of worship. You see, that's why the writer says, serve with gladness. No one likes a rude and unengaged helper. Our motives, our attitude must be right. So let's worship God through our service with gladness. The psalmist says, come before God with joyful song. Now, I love to sing with my wife. But the difference is my wife, when she sings, <laughs> she sings like an angel. Me, not so much. But that doesn't stop me. But while the crowd at church plugs their ears when I begin to sing, I love God because God, He has this built-in auto-tune to make it sound like Andre Bocelli. At least I hope that's what he hears. But then in verse 4, he says something that we may miss its importance. The psalmist says that we are to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We are to give thanks to him and to bless his name. Think about God and who he is. God is the perfect judge who turns away from wickedness. His gates are shut to the unclean, according to Revelation chapter 21. But for us, as his children, we are made clean by the blood of Christ. By Jesus paying the price for our sin, we are declared blameless. This is why we can walk into his courts with confidence. This is why we can enter His presence without fear. He is our Father, 
who sees only us as his masterpiece. This is why we come before him shouting with thanksgiving to him. God is worthy. Friends, as you can see, there are so many ways to worship our King. So here is my challenge for you today. I want you to worship without reservation. The psalmist, he said, shout. He said, sing. He said, serve. He said, enter. He said, praise. Whatever your preferred way of worship, do it and do it without reservation. God is worthy of a celebration. We are truly blessed by the grace of God. Therefore, we should worship Him freely and with loving enthusiasm. When we do, it is God who wins the day.